If you've lost a limb, then you're going to be an amputee for life. So it's about rehabilitating people and giving them the power to continue on with their, their life in the way that they want to. I was deployed to Afghanistan, which is where I uh, had my injuries. We were on a patrol, I was attached to the Danish infantry, um, and one of the soldiers trodden a, um, a landmine, essentially, and my team got called forward to try and um, give some first aid and clear some safe space. And I ended up standing on a second IED. Kind of struggled a bit getting on uh, with uh, the normal prosthetic legs. So eventually the military funded me to go to Australia where I had osseointegration, um, basically mechanically attaching the legs to the bone in your legs rather than using a socket. When I was in Australia, actually, the um, prosthesis I had there just um, I just started thinking oh, it should be quite a good fun job to do. Uh, so when I came back, decided to apply to come here. We found that having Alistair on the course is fantastic for the cohort of students because he's, he will view things very differently from someone who comes into the course straight from school, for example. So he is more aware of some of the challenges that an amputee has on a day-to-day -day life. Um, for example, if they're sitting in a chair and they want to get up to go to the kitchen, he will think that through and plan it in a different way to uh, other students will. And Alistair's very good at sharing those experiences with the rest of his group, so um, they, are, they are really benefiting from having him here. A lot of the problems with traditional prosthetics come from the socket body interface, so you're getting rubbing, twisting, uh, pain, just trying to get the exact right fit to a human that's always changing shape, maybe changing size from day to night. The designs back from the 19th century are still the basis of mechanical devices now. And one simple device that we have is called the split hook, which although can look a little bit scary for some people, is highly functional and can give people back an awful lot of function with their grasp and with their pinch. This is operated by simple body movements and the patient will stretch and this allows us to open and close. I was injured in the Falklands in August 1983. That's after the conflict. I was, I was just getting rid of, I was di just disposing of waste explosives. That's all I want to say on, on that matter. But I was lucky enough to become one of the first to, to receive a myoelectric uh, on the NHS. Uh, different different uh, harnesses, different slings, different uh, sockets. But basically, it's a myoelectric hand and it served me well. The basic functions is that it, it opens and closes. Uh, that sounds, you know, that sounds dead basic, but but that's it. it. In my mind, I imagine doing that with the hand that I haven't got, and when I have the myoelectric on, uh, it it opens, and then I imagine doing that, and it closes. When I first went into employment, there were a lot of patients who were still wearing metal and leather legs. We're now treating people with microprocessor knees, ankles, hands, and we're starting to incorporate different materials into the socket. So we teach people the, the practical skills from patient assessment um, to the casting, the measurements, the modification, the manufacture and the fitting and review so that they can treat patients who are either missing a limb or have um, a condition which requires an orthotic device. What I think is important, it's not just about providing technology for people, but it's about how we interact with that technology. So I'm very interested in the sensory developments, so that when we touch something, the amputees will get some feedback, so they know if they're touching something hot or cold, or when they make contact, or where even their arm or their foot is in space. My dream is to have a, um, a mobile prosthetic clinic, which would then travel you could even like have it in like an ISO container or something, ship it to anywhere in the world and then drive around and use some new technology such as um, 3D scanning, laser scanning, and then more contemporary to like make the sockets and provide a, a sort of third world service where there isn't any at the moment.